Hello there, thank you. Uh, so yes, thanks for attending the lightning talk here, talking about collaboration over time and space. Um, first off, my name is Eric. I am a developer, have been doing so for a couple of decades now. Uh, and presently, I'm working with and collaborating with developers who are working on code bases in the open from multiple public organizations. Uh, these code bases are under stewardship of the foundation for public code. Public code is free and open source software developed by public organizations or for public organizations uh, to achieve a public policy or part of a public policy. And increasingly, we find that policy is being implemented in software and that our core infrastructure is sometimes at least having a software component, if not being entirely software. And as people talk about the so-called digital transformation of the public sector, it's a thing I keep hearing people say, um, we in fact see this unfolding all the time. And all public infrastructure, whether that's a bridge or whether it's software, tends to have very high expectations and requirements that things outside the public sector don't necessarily have to have, specifically around transparency, but also reliability, accountability, but even things like sovereignty is, is one of the things that comes up. And this is a lot to ask of a small public organization, a municipality that is uh, of a small village trying to make sure that their their citizenry can help participate in where the potholes are, the street lights that are out, uh, probably don't have their own IT staff and they don't have expertise in this. And their needs though, are the same as the needs of other municipalities, some great, some small. And the way we are achieving this today to meet these expectations and fulfill these requirements is collaborating in the open across organizations. And a key tool to that is the standard for public code. All of the collaborators agree to fulfill the requirements and, and uphold all the criteria in the standard. And if you're a developer, as you look through this, you're not going to see anything that's very surprising to you. It's almost certainly going to be things that you're either already doing or you, maybe you wish you were doing. Um, What's going to be different from maybe other agile handbooks or engineering guides is that there's guidance for not just individual contributors, but also for management and even policymakers. And what this means is, is that the devs, the designers, the people that are contributing to the project know that they have the support of people at many layers in the organization, whether they are a uh, contracted uh, developer working for a vendor providing software services, or whether they are a developer employed by the state. And so, uh, as they're collaborating, the public administrations are having the growing understanding that the software that they're working on is going to be evolving to fit their needs over time, and that they can collaborate on procuring the next feature rather than trying to understand all of what their possible needs are up front, that they can work incrementally, which is a very different model than the way they've done procurement in the past. But because they're using the standard, because they're collaborating with others using the standard, they have confidence that these procurements are going to add up to giving them that increased control, the reduction in risks and costs, and they'll see their tax spend be more effective because the sum is adding up to something greater than the parts. So uh, if you are at all connected to uh, any sort of software development in the public sector, or if you just have an interest, I invite you to review the standard for public code and hopefully even participate. It's currently draft and we are making this a public resource as well. So uh, there's the link to the repository for it. Uh, pull requests are absolutely welcome and you can also get in touch with me directly.